Uh, so next, we have Walter Muleman uh, from Monalis Calisab at uh, MIT. So he's going to show us how to use another popular tools for the annotation for uh, uh, non-coding variants, uh, haplorec. All right, so like the previous speaker, I am also not the developer of Haploreg, of the two I'm presenting. Uh, I've also been an active user, mostly yesterday. Um, <laughs> but I will, uh, I will do my best in uh, you know, putting across the main concept behind it. So like the previous tool, um, you know, the first two bullet points are essentially the same, right? In the sense that we have a lot of variants that we find in all these GWAS studies that are mostly in non-coding regions, and we have no idea what they do, right? So we can use data from ENCODE and from the Roadmap Epigenomics Project to get a little bit more insight into, you know, what these regions underlying these variants actually might be doing. Um, now the key, I think the key difference between regular MDB and haploreg is that haploreg takes a slightly different approach to things in the sense that it kind of exploits the LD structure of the correlation structure, haplotype structure of the of the genome, and I'll I'll, I'll try and illustrate a little bit what that what that means. Um, so, this is uh, this could be you know some example um, uh, genomic region with a number of uh, SNP locations. Uh, you got in the red, you got like some lead or tag SNP that you've measured on like a SNP array, and on the y-axis you see some kind of association with a particular trait. And as you can see, both all of these are in non-coding regions. Um, now, what you can do is you can use chromatin state data from ENCODE or from Roadmap, and you can sort of like overlay that with this region for a number of different cell types. Right? And then, you know, maybe you can find that your SNP of interest, your red SNP there, is actually inside a uh, enhancer region, for example. Um, it turns out that this is not the case here. So. Um, you can say, okay, well, now we can't really explain what this SNP does or what the underlying function of this SNP might be, so we just move on to our next SNP in the list. Um, basically, what haploreg does, uh, and this is, I'm just showing you the, the chromatin states for GM12878 here, but what haploreg does is it looks at what is the LD structure, so which SNPs, which nearby SNPs around the, the lead or attack SNP are in very strong LD with your lead or attack SNP. Right? And the idea is that if that LD structure is strong enough, if that uh, correlation is strong enough, that you can also look at the other SNPs that you can impute or you can derive in other ways. So even though our lead uh, SNP is not inside an enhancer region, we now have a bunch of candidates here that we can also look at if we assume that this is the haplotype block. Um, and we can now also look at whether these SNPs are maybe in interesting regions. And as you can see in this case, you know, at least two of them are. Uh, in uh, enhancer regions that are specific for GM12878. This is just a cartoon example. Um, now, if we actually look at a real example, it's not that different. Uh, maybe the cartoon example was derived from the real example, maybe. Um, so here we see again uh, our lead SNP, uh, and it falls actually inside an enhancer region specific for GM12878. But maybe we don't have any further evidence of what's going on there. Maybe if we look at the underlying sequence, so we, you know, we take this uh, SNP and we look in regular MDB, there's little evidence to be found, right? So that's basically where it essentially stops with regular MDB. For haploreg, you can now say, okay, let's actually look at the other SNPs that are in the same LD block and see whether there's anything underlying those SNPs that might actually give us clues onto what that uh, region might be, might be doing. Um, if you look at that one in particular, that's a SNP that's in strong LD with our first SNP. It actually turns out that if you look at the sequence at, at the particular SNP variant here, that you can actually see that it actually strengthens uh, 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 a certain binding motif for ETS1, which is actually a predicted activator of lymphoblastoid enhancers. Um, moreover, it turns out that if you look into other, uh, other variants found in this particular GWAS study, that a lot of those actually also affect the, uh, the, the ETS1 locus. So by exploiting the LD structure, you can get a little, you, you basically get a second chance at finding a potential uh, regulatory mechanism. Okay. 
So this is really the sort of the, the, the main difference between regular MDB and uh, haplogroup. So the initial paper was published in 2012, um, and more recently there's been another update uh, with, you know, like an update of ENCODE data, update of uh, roadmap epigenomics data, more uh, motif data as in there, there's links to EQTL studies, et cetera. So um, this is what I just said, basically. Uh, and again, all these slides are going to be, are, are available, so look at this if you want. Uh, one very useful thing to point out is that if you look at this uh, latest NAR paper, uh, it actually contains a very short but sweet uh, tutorial that takes you step, to, step, through, uh, step by step through the, the process of using haplorec for a particular study of interest. Okay. So what does it actually look like? This is uh, this, the stunning graphic design behind haplorec uh, version 4.1. Um, there's different things you can do. One thing you can do is you can just, you know, if you have a particular SNP of interest, then you can just fill in here the, the, the uh, RS ID. Alternatively, you can uh, provide a region, genomic region, in this format here. You can also upload a text file with a number of SNP IDs. Or alternatively, and that's what I'm going to show now, is you can select one of many, many uh, GWAS studies in which a number of variants have been associated with a particular trait of interest. So here I'm going to focus on this. Um, uh, ADHD uh, study, which found 26 variants, as you can see here, is to be associated with ADHD. So if we would select this one, we press submit, then we end up with a long list of 26 of these haplotype blocks associated, one of them associated with each of these 26 SNPs, okay? So what I'm showing you here is only one out of these 26 haplotype blocks, right? Um, and all of these SNPs, are in very strong LD, as you can see in this column here, with our lead SNP. So that means that, you know, all of these are very good candidates for, you know, further studying the regulatory mechanism underlying that, that particular locus. And it's actually, the list is actually a little longer because it's actually, oh, and there in the red, see, did you see that in red? So if you focus here, I'll say, I'll say whenever it passes here, you see the tag SNP. There. Right, there it is. So all of these are in very strong LD with our, with our lead or tag SNP. Um, if we would actually still look at the result page, if we click one of these, uh, one of these SNPs here, then it looks a little bit like this. So uh, in this part in view, what you can see is that for all uh, roadmap epigenomes, so these are all different cell types, and I, you know, I'm not showing all of them because there's uh, about 130 of them, you can see what the chromatin state is according to different uh, chromatin state models underlying those regions. And if you do that for this particular SNP, part of the ADHD study, you see that it actually uh, turns out to be a relatively specific uh, brain enhancer. Um, now you can do uh, a little bit more than this. Uh, you can also, if you scroll down on this page, you get more information on uh, other studies in which this particular variant was, uh, was discovered, right? So for example, uh, Haplorec also includes the GRASP database, which basically contains a, uh, it's, a it's basically a huge catalog of all kinds of QTL hits. Uh, and you can see that there's a bunch of studies in which this particular variant has been associated with uh, changes in expression. So that's another thing that's sort of, uh, that Haplorec provides on top of regular MDB is it actually provides links to EQTL. So you can actually have a sense of does your variant actually uh, have an effect on expression. Um, and it has several, several of these kind of databases it includes. Um, importantly, and this is where uh, haploreg is again uh, similar to regular MDB, is it also looks at whether a particular variant is going to disrupt or create uh, a particular uh, binding site. So in this case, we see that there is a, um, um, a P300 uh, binding site in the, in the reference allele or around the reference allele, and this is sort of the log odds ratio of, of uh, uh, or the log, log odds score of that particular motif instance. And we see that with our particular SNP here, it actually disrupts that, uh, that, that motif very, very strongly and the log out score very really plummets. So these are sort of the, these are the different things you can do with haploreg. Um, you don't have to know the LD structure of your, of your variants, right? So haploreg takes care of that. Um, so it allows you to sort of like, you know, widen your search a little bit. You don't have to uh, you don't have to find, you know, you don't have to stick to your particular variant. You can look around it, basically. Uh, and haploreg takes care of, uh, of all of that. 
Um, what it doesn't do, what regular does do, is it does not provide a score for, you know, this, these are the different sort of tiers or, or levels of evidence for your, uh, for your uh, variant. And there's several reasons for that, and we can talk about that later. Um, what it also does not do, which is something that is great about regular MDB, regular MDB allows you to score any kind of genomic location, right? So it also means you can do, you can use novel variants or rare variants. Haploreg is completely uh, pre-computed. So for regular MDB, you could provide any kind of VCF file of regions of interest. Haploreg basically is a VCF file. Right? It's just a heavily annotated VCF file, uh, which is also available for download. Um, right, so this is the paper. Like I said, uh, take a look at it for the tutorial. Uh, it takes you through some of these ADHD um, uh, example loci. Um, take a look at the website itself. It's a slightly shorter, shorter URL right now. Uh, and lastly, I want to thank Luke, uh, who developed this thing, and Jill Moore, uh, who have both provided me with uh, some of these um, slides. Thanks. Yeah, you can sort them. I think uh, I think it's very debatable on whether scoring is, is uh, I think it's very hard to make a scoring non-arbitrary. And I think the scoring of regular MDB, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly very useful in the sense that you can, you can at least get like a sense of what level of evidence there is. But binding of transcription factors or the presence of motifs is not everything, right? <laughs> And it sort of goes in against a little bit of the sort of the uh, uh, unbiased nature of the GEOA studies, I guess, right? So it's, it's, it, it would definitely be great, but I think devising a score like that is something that is a kind of a field of its own. It would be great, but uh, yeah. So um, it's, not, it's not necessarily a question for Haploreg, but um, is there a plan to do the same type of interface or analysis for the mouse, or is it just for uh. human? <laughs> yeah, good question. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. There should be. Um, I don't know. I will. I will ask Luke and Manolas. I will. I will ask them. That's a good. Yeah, it's a good point. It should be there. I agree. Um, The mouse there is only MM9. Correct. You can't take the mouse. Okay, thanks. Sure. So, so before I forgot, I also want to announce for all the people who are presenting in the workshops, actually we will be in the help deck tomorrow from 7 to 9, or 7.30 to 9.30, whatever. So we will be there. So like Jason Ernst or Eric or, or Walter will be sitting at the table with our name on it. You can come in here, grab a beer, and ask us all the questions. All right. So let's again thank all the speakers in this session, and we'll take a break now.